Hello, folks. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Engines.com podcast. I'm Achilles, and today with me is Bogey from Girl Gang Garage, and you may also know her from uh, All Girls Garage and many other shows. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> One for the outtakes. Thank you for joining us at Engines.com. Let's learn about Bogey. Where did you come from? <laughs> well, one day my mommy and daddy loved each other very much. No. <laughs> I grew up originally in uh, New York, just outside of New York City, actually, um, and did not grow up around cars. New York, right? Like, I didn't grow up around cars. Nobody in my family was into cars. Basically, nobody knows where I came from or, like, how this happened, that I became a mechanic. Um, but I fell in love with Volkswagen Bugs and decided that I wanted one. And I then enrolled in high school auto shop, fell in love with working on cars, restored my bug from the ground up. And it kind of just began the, the slippery slope into the life that I live now and wound up moving out to Arizona, where I live now. Um, I moved out there originally for technical school. Okay. That's that's kind of the really, really, really short nutshell of, of where I came from. So, <laughs> auto shop. Yes. Something that doesn't exist very much anymore. These no, days. it doesn't. I know. It makes such an impact, those schools. 100%. It is such a disservice to our nation, to our kids, to our society that we don't have these shop classes in high schools anymore. They've yeah. been trying to get rid of them for years. I mean, yeah. when I was in high school, they threatened to cancel the program for budget cuts. Mm. And um, and me being like the totally like overachieving student, I put myself, um, I got myself a seat on the budget advisory committee. No way. And wouldn't let them cancel the program. It's ridiculous because all these high schools they're looking at, they want to see all of their kids go to college. But college isn't for all kids. It's and not it's not everybody. fair to the kids to say, like, this is the box that you have to fit in. Yep. And if you don't fit in it, then there's something wrong with you. Like, yep. No, there's not anything wrong with you. You yep. just have a different type of intelligence. It is. So it's a real shame. It's a real shame that it's going away. There are some great programs out there. It's just it's getting fewer and far between. But some areas, at least folks that I talk with, they're actually like bringing it back, it seems like. And I think that it's starting to become a awareness of... We need that type of hands-on yeah. educational process. It's not just go to the formal college and get a degree. Yeah. Without mechanics, the world you comes can't go to a halt. Right. Those deep thoughts for the morning. Yes. yes. <laughs> Way to get started. <laughs> All right. So, fast forward. You've been wrenching. You you found your passion for the automotive industry. Where did you fall into the All Girls Garage and then everything? Totally unexpectedly. Like, I had no dreams or aspirations of being on TV. It wasn't something that I had sought out. Um, I So I had I had been a technician for about seven years for BMW. I quit in November of 2006, um, the BMW dealership that I was working at, to start my own shop. So I was about three years into running my shop. I was basically running around like a chicken with my head cut off, just wrenching and doing all of, like wearing all the hats. Like anybody who's owned a shop or is a business owner, like the early years, you know, like those first, those first early years, you're wearing all the hats and like all day long, you're just like, I'm doing all the things, right? Um, so I was just crazy town doing all the things. And I had been actually approached by a number of production companies and they all wanted the drama. Right? Mm. Like they wanted, we're going to take six girls and we're going to put them in a house together and they're going to open up their own auto repair shop. I'm like, that sounds awful. <laughs> um, and I did have somebody come actually to my shop in Phoenix and they were thinking of doing a show at the shop. And at the end of it, he said, we really love you. We, we like your shop. We like your customers. We like your team. Your family is great. We like everything about what you're, we're, you're doing here. The only thing is, is you're just... You're not enough of a bitch for TV. And I was like, wow. <laughs> if that's what it takes to be on TV, I don't want to do it. Yeah, like, <laughs> right? like, that's not me. So when the producers of All Girls Garage called me at first, I was like, yeah, no, not interested. And she's like, no, 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 wait. Like, this is education-based. This isn't drama. This isn't reality TV. There's no wrench throwing. There's no name calling. Yeah. This, isn't, this isn't about any of that. I'm like, all right. 
Well, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll consider it. <laughs> so <laughs> I flew out for an audition, and um, the rest is history. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, there we go. It yeah. wasn't intentional. <laughs> well, that's good that you, you held to your values and not want to go down that road, which so many people do. I feel like for women, particularly in this industry, right? like women are less than two and a half percent of all automotive technicians, mm. right? There's not a lot of us. Yeah. And so like any minority, whether it's right or not, like I wind up standing for and representing all women in the industry. Because when I meet a, a guy in the industry who's never met a female mechanic, He's going to base all of his future thoughts on female mechanics based on his experience of meeting me. So whether that's crappy or not, that's the reality. And it's hard enough for women in this industry. The last thing I wanted to do was be a part of making it harder by playing into any of those stereotypes or any of those, you know, the ridiculousness. So I think particularly as a woman, I felt really passionate about not doing the high drama, crazy ridiculousness. And that's so true with, with the stereotype. I mean, it is what it is, and it's been that way for so many years. We've had uh, many number of women work in our company, even in the, the contact center, which are actually taking phone calls from people wanting to buy an engine or buy a transmission or anything like that. And it happens. The, the calls come through. Well, mm-hmm. I want to speak to a man. Right. <laughs> And she's more than capable to right. answer any question the person has, but they don't care. So, no. you know, those people exist. That's out there. But the trick is to then put them on the phone with the most unintelligent man that you have on staff just to prove a point. Like we used to do that. Honestly, we used to idea. do that at my shop because we would experience that every once in a while. I had, you know, my male employees. I had my female employees. And there were a small group of people who would come in and only want to talk to the guys. Yeah. And my my shop foreman, he was wonderful, he was Papa Bear of the shop. He was great. Like religiously, people would be like, "Oh, I, would, I only want to talk to him." He would be like, "I don't know, you gotta ask her." <laughs> right? Like he would play dumb, and and it was helpful to have that because it just reinforced and yeah. it allowed them to be like, "Oh, okay, maybe that was a stupid stereotype for me to make or a stupid assumption." Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely, no. Uh, that's awesome. So women will ask me often, like, what can I, how can I do more? How can I be more involved? How to support bringing more women into the industry? I'm like, the biggest thing that you can do is be visible. Yeah. Like, have your image out there, be visible, talk about what you do, share your story, because some little girl somewhere that you may never, ever meet is one day going to be Googling mechanic or whatever and see a picture of you and be like, oh. She looks like me. I guess I can do that, right? Yeah. And that's that's how the change happens. Like it never happens as fast as we want it to. Right. Change happens slowly, but I think I think we are seeing I'm excited to see this next generation, right? Yes. Like when I tell somebody your age or older that I'm an auto mechanic, they're like, "Er?" <laughs> <laughs> but when I tell a 12-year-old boy that I'm a mechanic, they're like, "Cool." Yeah. Like, like it's, it's no big thing, thing right? Yes. <laughs> so yes. I think it'll be really interesting to see as these kids grow up how how the world changes. On that note, I seen uh, one of the guys pulled in today driving a Tesla. Oh, yeah. We we'll talk about changes coming. Yeah. And the electric and the EVs. Mm-hmm. It's very different. It's very it different. Yes. Yes. So much technology. And I think it's exciting. I know there's a lot of like mixed feelings on it. There's like the old school folks who are like, no EV. And keep it carbureted. Can't stop it though. <laughs> Can't stop progress. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's such a testament to like what we do. We build and we make and we come up with crazy things and we figure out how we come up with this idea and we don't know how it's going to work. Like I can do that. I can make that. I can build that. And that's that's the cool thing about doing what we do. And I enjoy it. I think it's exciting. I don't necessarily love working on EVs myself necessarily. I have mixed feelings on a lot of that, but yeah. I love the technology. I love the constant pushing. And I love that it makes it, there's always something new to learn. Like this job never gets boring. You're always learning something new. It's always changing. It's always exciting. You do a lot of uh, training or classes? Yeah, so I sold my general repair shop a year and a half ago and put all of my time and energy into Girl Gang Garage, which is kind of like the training space. So that's where we do the all-female builds. 
And we, when we're not in COVID times, we do workshops and classes. So intro to mechanical, intro to welding, intro to body work, intro to paint, like really not trying to be a trade school. We're not replacing trade schools. We kind of look at ourselves as like the funnel into the trade schools or into a trades career okay. path. For for ladies particularly who maybe have never gotten an opportunity to, to try working with their hands. Yeah. Because I think... You know, guys guys and girls these days aren't necessarily exposed to this stuff, but definitely if you're a, a woman, the odds of you ever having a chance to hold a plasma cutter, mm -hmm. try a welder, like play with this stuff, like it's not, unless you have a family member or somebody that you know who's in the, these industries, you just right. don't have that opportunity. So we're trying to create a space where people can play and try this stuff and explore it and see if it's something that they'd like. Okay. Um, and also just to create a community of other like-minded women um, and for professional ladies to come together. So yeah, we do all of this crazy stuff and we do the big all-female builds and those are insane because it's um, it's a SEMA build, right? Which yeah. SEMA builds are just crazy yeah. by their nature. Add to that that it's not like a consistent crew working on it. So. Our all-female builds generally are structured where they take five to ten months. Um, we're hoping to have 12 months for this current one that we're, we're starting to get geared back up on. Um, but it's a constantly rotating group of people. So you'll have like five people at a time, never the same five people. Oh my God. It's always changing. And about 30% of the women who work on these vehicles have like no experience working on cars. Like I've had women come through the shop who I had to explain what a ratchet was. Oh my God. Like this is a socket. This is a ratchet. And you get it done in what time? Like 10 months. <laughs> yeah, it's insanity. Oh it is insanity. Gosh. So yeah, pretty much every day of those builds is the most exciting, crazy, ridiculous shop stories that I have. Of wow. Like, you know, right before SEMA being, you know, five days before SEMA and not sleeping for five days and <laughs> going crazy and yeah, <laughs> like all of the insanity. So where, how do you promote this? How are you recruiting for these people? I mean, Word of mouth, social media. I, there's so few opportunities for, for women in the trade. There's starting to be a ton more. There's, we're like starting to see stuff. Local in your area? It's in Phoenix, but we have ladies that come from all over the place. Our first okay. build attracted... Um, uh, close to 100 women from 23 different states. Holy cow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, like this is no, it's no small scale thing. Whoa. <laughs> it's ridiculous. They all get to participate or do you vet them or how do you? Anybody who raises their hand and says, I want to come and play. Um, and we have limitations of how many people we can have at a time. Right. And so scheduling, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out for folks, but yeah. everybody is welcome. Wow. The the pros are connecting with one another. They're getting to explore teaching and they're sharing their That's skills so nice. and they're learning each other's skills. The hobbyists get to connect with one another. And what a see. great idea. It's awesome. It's really a pretty phenomenal thing. It's insanity, but it's, but it's magical all at the same time. I've never heard <laughs> of anyone doing something like that before. It is it is the thing that simultaneously fills me up and exhausts me, yes. but it is 100% worth it. I'm sure there's days where you get to the point where, like, why the hell am I doing this? <laughs> Mostly right before SEMA, and you haven't slept for five days. <laughs> that's, that's when it gets bad. It's but all it's part so of the fun. It. it is, and it's so amazing. Like we've... I've connected with so many incredible people and and I think too not just the ladies like these all female builds have brought out our allies in the the men within the industry mm. too like we've seen so much more support than I think we anticipated from sponsors from just other technicians other folks in the industry like people who are like yes we need more women in the trades when women need to be supported we need to share their stories we need to highlight them and like i think i didn't expect as much support as we wound up getting so yeah. that was really that was nice that's awesome very cool yeah thank you so much for coming down thanks Absolutely. for uh, sitting with us and talking on the podcast Thank you for having me. Yeah. And uh, how can people find out more about you and what you're doing? Absolutely. Um, so my personal Instagram, Facebook, website, all of the above is all Bogey's Garage. And then B-O-G-I. There's no E in Bogey. People get that one wrong. B-O-G-I. <laughs> garage. Bogey's Garage. And then uh, Girl Gang Garage is my shop. So that's on Insta and Facebook and website as well. So. All across the board. And of course, All Girls Garage, you can catch me on Motor Trend every Saturday morning or on the Motor Trend app anytime you want.
Awesome. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Engines.com podcast. We appreciate you, Boki, for coming out, and we'll see you all next time. Be sure to like, share, and follow us on Engines.com.